All right. In the last video, we talked about how we multiplied by three repeatedly, or we multiplied by one half repeatedly. And so exponential functions, what makes them an exponential function is that they have a constant multiplier. That's what makes, makes it special. So constant multiplier to get the next value. Um, you can think of it as a geometric sequence, if you will, but a lot of you don't know what that is yet. Um, but it's a sequence of numbers that you get to the next term by multiplying. I like to think that x is in the exponent in an exponential function. has a nice little ring to it, just with the x, is in the exponent in the exponential function. Nice little rhythm. So what does the general equation look like? We're going to adapt this, and we're going to start transforming it and stuff in other forms, but this is the general form. We're going to be able to add and subtract things on the end, but this a value, as we saw, before is going to act like our y-intercept. It's going to be your starting value. And what I mean by that is if we're dealing with exponential decay, that's going to be the amount of grams that you have at the beginning. This is going to be the amount of money that you put into the bank before it starts to grow. This is the amount uh, that your car is worth before it starts decreasing in value. And then B here is going to be your constant multiplier. In our warm-up examples, uh, we saw that when we multiplied by 3, stuff got bigger. When we multiplied by 1 half, stuff got smaller. So that's going to determine whether it's growth or decay. Um, in this constant multiplier, that's also going to contain your interest rate and things like that once we get into story problems. So what makes it grow and what makes it to decay? Well, the cutoff is 1. If your B value is bigger than 1, if your number that you're multiplying by repeatedly is bigger than 1, obviously your number is going to get bigger. If you multiply by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, it's going to grow. And so what it looks like, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, and so it's going to go up like this very quickly, actually, depending, depending on what your growth factor is, obviously. And then if you go the opposite direction with it, it's going to divide, 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 and you're going to get closer and closer to this asymptote of y equals 0. What is this value right here? Well, that's your initial value that we were starting with. So whatever a is, is going to be that initial value. I say that with some restraint just because we're going to be shifting that um, up and down and left and right. So decay. If b is less than 1, that's when numbers get smaller because you multiply by one half times one half times one half times one half. And so that's when you have decay. Now, it's just going to be the exact reflection image of the other graph. This is still going to be 0, comma a, whatever your a value. This is just going to start up higher and then go down. Now, we're going to put another disclaimer on here that B actually has to be in between 1 and 0. Because if B is negative, weird things happen. Because if you have a negative, say a negative 2 in here, and you square it, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. 
negative 2 raised to the fourth, positive 16. Negative 2 to the fifth, negative 32. And so it's going to be flip-flopping from positive to negative. And so that, that's going to be where it's not really going to be growth or decay. So what characteristics do we have? We already sort of talked about this before, but I can raise anything to any power. So as far as x's are concerned, whether it's growth or decay, all real numbers all the way. Our range is all based on this y equals 0 line. All our y values are always positive. That's going to change slightly when we start shifting it, but for right now, the basic graph, the range is always going to be greater than 0. The y-intercept, like we mentioned, is always your a value, your starting value. Which, by the way, if we don't have an a, say we just had a y equals b to the x. b to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. And so your y-intercept, if you don't have an a, is 1. Because you can always write a 1 out front, 1 times b to the x. So if you don't have an a value, 1 is your y-intercept because you can just plug in 0. Moving on, behavior. We talked about if it was bigger than 1 times 2 times 2 times 2, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's growth. And if it's less than 1, it's going to be decay. Horizontal asymptote. I already mentioned that. Labeled it up here, y equals 0. That is not always going to be the case, as we'll see in the next video, because we're going to be going up and down with that. We're going to be shifting it up and down. Vertical asymptote. Trick question. There are no vertical asymptotes. However, people sometimes think there are some, just because it goes up so fast, and we want to put a dashed line here or something. However, think, if you go to the left to negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, there's no number that I'm not allowed to plug in there. So that's why there's no vertical asymptote. All right, on to transformations in the next one.